this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. And I thought what we'd do uh, in this video is start talking about some of the um, some of the comments, some of the questions, some of the requests that have come my way over the years to some of my previous videos. And these are sort of uh, what I want to talk about right now, sort of more of a philosophical sort of point of view perspective. And uh, these have come about uh, since the early days of me loading on math videos and stuff like this. They came about, you know, when we started talking about zero and infinity and sort of kicked into full gear when we started talking about time, maybe how time travel played out from a mathematical point of view when it came to the movie Arrival or to how the perception of time can vary with age depending on you know how we decide to take a look at the ratio of how long we've lived and how much time we have to live really right and more recently to you know the video we put out we talked about uh, a four-dimensional world that we live in with the fourth dimension being time right and uh, the questions or the comments and the, re the requests really they're sort of along the lines of asking me how I perceive the world to be how I perceive our society to be how how the universe really functions, right? Or my perception of how life should be, how society should be, and how I function within the society, right? And I've actually planned on doing some of these videos, and this is one of the, or this discussion we're about to have, or sort of me giving you my perspective on a, on a, either a dogma or a story or scientific experiment, depending on how you want to take a look at it, uh, what my perspective on this story is, right? And the story is basically this. It's called the 100th monkey effect, right? And I'm not going to go too much detail into what the story is, if it's true or if it's not, if it's, if it's just a story or if it was an experiment conducted the way it was, you know, some people assume that it was conducted or if it was conducted differently in the data and stuff like this. We're not going to delve into that. But basically, the 100th story, just to give you a lowdown of what this is, uh, and I'll provide links in the description of this video, the 100th monkey story is this. Uh, the story goes that in the 1950s, a couple of scientists working on an island, observing some monkeys, started giving them, I believe, sweet potatoes, right? And I read the story a long time ago, and I just reread it again last night and i've had this per um, perception for a while so if i get any of the details wrong please you know read the whole story i'm giving you my disclaimer right now i'm not here to uh, nitpick the story it's more the interpretation of the story than anything else right so there's two um two scientists in japan on one of the islands uh, observing monkeys and they start giving the monkeys sweet potatoes right and the sweet potatoes they throw on the ground and they're initially dirty and the monkeys you know they still eat them but they don't like eating them because they're dirty and then you know some of the youth in the population in the sample size I guess because there are the same type of monkeys living in other islands right but for that island we population of the island for that island the younger monkey or one young monkey starts washing the sweet potatoes and starts eating them and through observation and the monkey showing the other monkeys what he's doing you know the the younger monkey starts some of the younger monkeys start washing their potatoes sweet potatoes eating them some of the older ones start washing them start like this and what happens is the story or the myth or the dogma or the experiment whichever way you want to look at it is after a certain number of monkeys one monkey later all of a sudden the monkeys not only on that island but monkeys across the water on different types of on different islands start washing their sweet potatoes as well start washing their fruits and they start eating them right and you know some people um some people bring up the story when they want to talk about um, the critical mass theory where you know you only need a certain number of a population uh, to start doing something before the whole population start starts doing that same thing or basically you only need a certain percentage of the population to accept something or to change their behavior towards something for that thing to reach critical mass and all of a sudden the society, the population, will start will start doing that, right? And this this idea is uh, there is mathematical merit towards that, right? One hundred percent, there is mathematical merit towards that, and that is a scientific fact. You only need a certain 
reach a certain point until everything snowballs, right? You can do that in chemical experiments and stuff like this, right? Chemistry, right? So it does exist, but uh, we're not really f discussing that right now. What we're going to discuss is specifically the interpretation of the story, right? And for the interpretation of the story, some people say this is the very good example of the critical mass, right? Uh, which I don't think it is a very good example of critical mass. I think there are way better scientific, more scientific examples of critical mass than this one, but it's a nice little social experiment, right? And some people say this is a, uh, because some, some of the interpretation of this uh, story is this, that, you know, it was a younger population of um, the monkeys that started washing their sweet potatoes and the older population never learned how to wash them so some people use this use this story to try to get the idea across that it's you know a change comes with youth and the older you get it's harder to make those changes and again this has some scientific merit in science there's a there's a sort of saying that says science doesn't progress with innovation. Science progresses with one death at a time, right? Because there are certain scientists that have lived a certain, to be a certain age, and they just can't change their perspective on life, right? They can't change their programming, right? Which is, you know, we can go into education and how programming works and all this jazz. So there's a lot we can talk about regarding this story, right? My take on the story is this everybody that talks about this s talks about the monkeys right they mention that you know the monkeys reached the critical mass and after the 100th monkey or whatever monkey it was all of a sudden that idea that behavior disseminated through not only the tribe of the monkeys that lived on that island but to other monkeys living on different islands, right? And some people say the monkeys swam over, showed them the stuff. Some people say some of the same experiments were being conducted on other islands, and um, these scientists were going over there. So there's a lot of different things about this. Again, you can I'll provide a link, uh, one link anyway, at least to the story, and then you can proceed from that if you want to read about the details and you know if the experiment really happened or whatnot, right? But a lot of the interpretation, interaction with this story is about the monkeys. It's about the monkeys changing their behavior, therefore we can change our behavior. It's about the monkeys learning something new and society improving, right? It's about the monkeys' perception. And I heard the story a long time ago and it intrigued me. I, I, I like mythology, right? With comic books, I mean, you can... Uh, if you watch some of my comic book videos, you'll know that I love mythology. That's one uh, appealing factor of superheroes, right? Jack Kirby is the master of that, right? It was pure mythology that he was sharing. So I love stories, society, stories within societies, within cultures, mythology, right? And all of the interpretation of this mythology that I've come across for a number of years, I can't even remember when I first heard the stories about the monkeys, right? I'm not sure when I, you know, got this perspective on this story, but at some point in discussing the story, when it, whenever it came up and reading about it or whatever it was, right? I changed my perspective on it and looked at it from the human perspective, interpreting the story this way. That it wasn't the monkeys that changed their behavior, but that it was us human beings, the scientists, that finally were able to understand what the monkeys were doing. My interpretation is that the monkeys were doing this always. And it was the scientists that were programmed to believe that monkeys or other species could not have tools, could not do things to improve their lives on a communal level weren't able to recognize this and this i believe came about this per my this perception of this this story for me came about i'm not sure when it was but i know why it was it came about from the first time that i heard the story that when the europeans first came to the americas 
right, with their ships when they first came to, I believe it was South America or La uh, Central America, when they first arrived, right, with Columbus, with his three ships, I believe, right? The story is that the indigenous people living on the coast at the time, the first tribe that interacted with the Europeans, the people in that tribe didn't really see the ships, right? Even though the ships were coming over the horizon on the boats, the people on the coast were not able to see the ships. They were sort of uh, blind to it. And the only reason they were able to recognize that there are ships coming their way was because the shaman were the ones that first recognized that these were ships, actually saw them for the, sh the ships actually appeared to them, right? So I took that interpretation of how the first interaction between the Europeans and the indigenous population of the Americas, right? That it was the shaman that had to pinpoint, that had to tell everybody else that there are ships coming towards us, right? I took that story and then expanded it to the 100th monkey story that maybe just maybe it wasn't the monkeys that changed their behavior and learned how to wash the fruit it was the human beings that finally were able to see that the monkeys were washing their fruit and all of a sudden as soon as they were able to recognize this and talk about it with other human beings that might have been monitoring observing these monkeys on the other islands all of a sudden those human beings also saw what was taking place, right? And this sort of connects into sort of uh, my understanding of how chemistry, how, how mathematics, how science works, how nature works, which is whichever the path uh, that uses the least amount of energy uh, is is the path that usually makes more sense and to me it would have taken a lot less energy for human beings to actually notice that the monkeys were washing their fruit and talking about it to other scientists for them to notice that monkeys on other islands were also washing their fruit it takes less energy for that to happen than it does for a whole bunch of monkeys teaching other monkeys to do this and the youth being able to do this and the L, you know, some of the older monkeys being able to do this, most of the older monkeys not being able to do this. And then slowly, as soon as a sort of a barrier was crossed, critical mass was reached, all of a sudden that energy flowed to other islands and other monkeys uh, were washing their food and all of a sudden all of this thing happened, right? This critical mass kicked into gear and all the monkeys for some reason started washing all the fruit that is possible maybe right but to me it takes a lot less energy for all of a sudden the human beings to say hey i think the monkeys are washing the fruit and eating it right maybe it was just very simple washing maybe the sweet potatoes weren't that dirty all it took was a little dip in the water right instead of washing it completely because now we know after decades of observing animals that animals actually use tools they have tools right initially during that period in the 1950s i mean our understanding of the world around us was extremely more human centric than it is now right we didn't even give rights to human beings that looked different than us or had different beliefs than us let alone think believe that animals might have the ability to create tools and interact and communicate and maybe wash their fruit okay uh i thought i shared that little story um it, hopefully it's sort of uh, it's a good starting point as a conversation and gives you a different perspective on the 100th monkey story because uh, everything that i've come across says oh critical mass reached was reached for the monkey population nobody talks about the critical mass might have been reached 
for the human population that we all of a sudden realized that something was going on in the world that we weren't able to understand or recognize because of our programming, because of our social dogmas, right? Fun thought, fun thought. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.